Well, here we are once again. Topic 9.03, enthalpy and entropy. Hmm. Well, last video, you learned all about enthalpy, which is to say potential energy changes. And now we're going to take a look at another force in nature that makes things happen. Enthalpy can be used to do work. Remember, energy is can either be potential or kinetic. Uh, kinetic is doing work right now, and potential could be doing work, but it's not. For example, energy stored in chemical bonds can be released, and that energy can be used to do work, to move an object a distance. But that's not the only thing that can do work. There's a natural tendency in the universe from th for things to go from being more organized to more disorganized. And that tendency is called entropy. Things tend to go from clean to messy. I mean, think about your room. Your room is clean. A week later, it's messy. Does it get clean by itself? No, it got messy by itself. You have to put energy into it to get it clean again. That's what entropy is all about. So, the relevant vocabulary for today, enthalpy, the potential energy stored in the chemical bonds of substances, entropy, the state of disorder of a system. Now, this is tied to how fast the molecules are moving, so it's going to be tied directly to temperature, kinetic energy. Spontaneous means a change that once you start it generates enough energy to continue the change until it's complete. Imagine you're at the top of the hill on a bicycle and all you got to do is push off and you can go all the way down that hill on the energy you're generating. You don't have to put any more energy into it to get to the bottom of that hill. But non-spontaneous means that in order for it to happen, you have to keep putting energy into it. This is like being at the bottom of the hill trying to get to the top. If you stop pedaling partway up the hill, you're not going to go all the way to the top of the hill. You're going to fall off your bike and roll back down to the bottom of the hill because down, thanks to gravity, is a spontaneous direction. Completion means that you completely convert your reactants to products. In other words, 100% of your reactants are used up and they turn into products. It's like you used up all your pancake batter and you made pancakes with them. There's no more pancake batter left. It's all pancakes. And equilibrium is a condition where a change is reversible and the rate of a forward change is equal to the rate of a reverse change. So like being on a treadmill, you walk forward at the same speed the treadmill walks backwards, you are on an equilibrium system. Okay. The first law of thermodynamics, which is the law of conservation of energy, says you cannot create or destroy energy by physical or chemical change. So you can only convert from one form to another. So if you release potential energy, it's converted to kinetic energy and vice versa. So any energy lost as potential must be gained as kinetic. You, you can't gain or lose any, you know, create or destroy any, you can only convert it. All right. Uh, so nature favors changes that are exothermic. I mean, think about you holding a glass in your hand and you open your hand. What direction does the glass go? It falls in a direction that lowers its potential energy, which is towards the ground. So nature will always favor lower energy states, which is why if you weren't doing schoolwork, you'd probably rather be sleeping right now. Anything that takes less energy. Right now I'm at my computer and my cat is sleeping right at the base of my microphone. The second law is the law that involves entropy. Things tend towards more entropic states. Things tend to get messier over time. So this force called entropy, which can also do work on a system, is a tendency to progress towards states of increased disorder, randomness, chaos. Or if you want to look at it from a molecular perspective, from solids to liquids, and from liquids to gases. Because solids have the most order to their arrangement, and gases have complete disorder to their arrangement. So if you want to evaluate the entropy of a substance, just look at what phase it's in. If it's solid, it has low entropy. And if it's gas, it has very high entropy. Okay. Nature favors an increase in in entropy. So your room gets messy by itself, not clean. 
What happens when you let go of that glass? Not only does it fall, but when it hits the ground, it shatters. It becomes more disorganized. So a falling, shattering glass is a good picture to have in your mind for what nature favors. And what I mean by nature favors is given the chance, these are the spontaneous changes. Okay. So to determine the change in entropy that you have in a system, entropy will generally increase as a substance changes from a solid to a liquid to a gas. And for the purposes of what we're doing here, aqueous dissolved in water would have roughly equivalent entropy to the substance if it were in the liquid phase. For gases, the more gas you have flying around, the more chaos there is. Kind of like, let's say you have three kindergartners running around versus let's say 10 kindergartners running around, which is gonna cause greater chaos. So more moles of gas is higher entropy. So if we take a look at this reaction here, we'll note a couple of interesting things. First, we start off with a solid and it turns into the equivalent of a liquid. So we go from low entropy to medium entropy. So this change, entropy increases. Nature favors this. Nature favors an increase in messiness. Remember, when the glass hits the ground, it shatters. All right, in this reaction, we have a solid and a gas becoming all solid. Well, we had gas flying around, now we don't. So since there's less gas, entropy decreases. This is unfavored. Nature doesn't like this. All right. H2O liquid turning to H2O gas. Well, we start with medium entropy and we end with high entropy. And therefore, it's a positive change in entropy. And by the way, change, of course, is delta. And S is the symbol that was chosen to represent entropy. I have no idea why. Maybe they thought it was messy. Haha, <laughs> delta mess. Delta S, I guess. Anyway. Another example, we start off with three moles of gas, one mole of nitrogen and two moles of, nit of oxygen on the left side of the reaction, but we only end up with two moles of gas on the right side of the reaction. And therefore, since we've gone from three moles of gas flying around to only two moles of gas flying around, that's a negative change in messiness. Maybe that's why in the word messiness, there's like four S's. That's a lot of S's, four S's. So that's probably why it's delta. That's, no, that's probably not the reason. But if it helps you remember, then yeah, messiness is delta S. And since there's less messiness, there's a negative delta S. So how can we predict whether a reaction will happen once started? Well, now we have to take a look at both enthalpy and entropy changes. Now, imagine asking your parents if you can do something. See, this is one of the great things about adulting. If you, if you are an adult, typically, if you want to do something, you can. Although by the time you get to an adult, you basically understand whether you should or not. But ask your parents if you can do something. So this assumes that you're not playing your parents off against each other, and I would never recommend that. Let's play this game fair. Ask your mom if she says yes, and then you ask your dad and your dad says yes. Well, guess what? You've got permission. Woohoo! However, if you ask both of them and they both say no, well, then you can't do it. But what happens if one says yes and the other says no? Well, then it kind of depends on who said it louder, don't you think? If the yes was yes and the no was no, well, I guess you have permission. If the yes was yes and the no was no, <laughs> oh, 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 okay, <laughs> I guess I won't. So, which value is larger will depend on the result. So therefore, it, it depends. Is the yes louder or is the no louder? Okay, and the same thing goes the other way around. So if one factor is favored and the other factor is unfavored, then there's a battle and you're gonna have to figure out which one of those values is bigger before you determine whether the reaction will be spontaneous. So. That's your parents. Now, again, playing one parent off another, not a good idea. I don't condone it. Your parents were not crazy before they had you. They're crazy now. What's the variable involved in this equation? Yeah, never mind. Yeah, we were all kids once. We all drove our parents crazy. And 
our parents said, well, someday you're going to have kids of your own. And then you have kids of your own and you're like, yeah, I totally get it now. But anyway, uh, please do not play one parent off against another. I will not be responsible for the results. All right. Anyway, um, let's instead of mom and dad, let's take a look at enthalpy and entropy. Mom and dad sound different, right? Mom, dad. They're both palindromes, right? They're spelled the same way forwards as backwards. But you couldn't confuse mom for dad or dad for mom just by looking at the words. However, enthalpy and entropy, they both begin with N. They both end in P. It's just the middle stuff that's a little bit different. So it's sometimes hard to keep straight in your mind. So just do your best. Enthalpy has an H in it, like delta H, right? Enthalpy, delta H. So nature favors a decrease in enthalpy and an increase in entropy. So Imagine that this is mom. Mom likes things with less energy because she just doesn't want you running through the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. Calm down. Calm down. Decrease your enthalpy. All right. Less energy. Less energy. And, and then dad, of course, is messy. He favors an increase in entropy. So, wow, that, that, was, that wasn't uh, <clears throat> too general. Well, anyway, so um, any change that has a decrease in enthalpy and an increase in entropy, if both factors are favored, then it will be spontaneous. But if both factors are not favored, if it's a positive delta H and a negative delta S, well, then the reaction will not be favored and it won't be spontaneous. But if one is favored and the other is unfavored, well, then you have a whole different game on your hands. So let's look at this reaction. We have a negative delta H, says so right here. It says, it says negative. There we go. Negative delta H. Doesn't matter what the number is. It's a negative delta H. Nature favors that. Nature favors a negative delta H. So that is good. All right. Do I have permission? Delta H says, yes, you have permission. All right. What else is happening? We're starting with a solid, which has low disorder, and we're ending with the equivalent of a liquid, which has higher disorder. So overall, the disorder is going up. Well, nature favors that. Nature likes that. And so therefore, since both factors are favored, We've got clearance from enthalpy. We've got clearance from entropy. This reaction will be spontaneous under every condition. Dissolve sodium hydroxide in water, it'll dissolve. You don't have to do anything. It'll just do it on its own. Okay, how about this? In this reaction, we have a positive delta H. It says so right there, see? Plus, negative delta H is favored. So a positive delta H will not be favored. Mm, no bueno. All right, what about the entropy? Well, we're starting off with solid and gas, and we're ending with gas. However, we started with two moles of gas, and we're only ending with one mole of gas. There's less gas flying around, and with less gas flying around, that's lower entropy. Nature likes increasing entropy, not decreasing entropy. So since it's a no good for enthalpy and a no good for entropy, this reaction will be non-spontaneous. Now, this doesn't mean the reaction can't happen. It just means we have to continuously put energy into it to force it to happen. And the second we stop adding energy, the reaction not only will stop happening, it'll actually reverse itself. Like going up the hill on a bicycle, stopping your pedaling, falling off your bicycle, and rolling back down the hill again. In this reaction, we have a positive delta H. See, right there, positive. Well, negative delta H is favored, so a positive delta H won't be. All right, we have one strike against it. What about entropy? We start with a liquid and we end with a gas. Well, that's increasing in disorder. Therefore, we have a positive change in entropy. Hey, look at that, that's favored. Mother Nature likes that. So, it depends on which factor is bigger. If the enthalpy factor is bigger, the reaction won't happen. But if the entropy factor is bigger, then the reaction will happen. How do we make the entropy factor bigger? Well, we'll deal with that one next time. Anyway, it depends. And what depends means is that this reaction will reach equilibrium. There'll be a temperature at which it's spontaneous in both directions. And if you go above that temperature, then it will either become spontaneous or not, and vice versa. But again, that's for tomorrow. For this reaction, we have a negative delta H, which is favored, right? Negative delta H is favored. However, we're going from solid plus gas to all solid. There's no more gas flying around. 
So that's negative delta S, which is unfavored. See, positive is favored, negative is not. Therefore, once again, because one factor is favored and the other isn't, it depends. This reaction will reach equilibrium. Okay, so what is this depends? So the reaction can be spontaneous under certain circumstances, and that circumstance is always involving temperature. So in this particular reaction, you have solid turning to liquid. Hey, this is water melting. We have a positive delta H, right? You have to put water into ice to get it to melt. That's not favored. But we have a positive delta S. That means that solid is turning into a higher phase. So we have delta H is unfavored, but delta S is favored. At zero degrees Celsius, this reaction becomes spontaneous. Below zero, you can't melt ice. But above zero, ice melts spontaneously. So at zero, solid and liquid happens at the same rate as liquid to solid. We have what's called phase equilibrium. The same is true of freezing. When freezing takes place, we have a negative delta H, see right there, which is favored. And we have a decrease in phase, therefore a decrease in entropy, which is not favored. So freezing will only be spontaneous at temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. So we have an equilibrium at zero degrees Celsius between the two phases. And that's what depends means. At zero degrees Celsius, you can have both melting and freezing taking place. If you increase the temperature, you'll only have melting. If you decrease the temperature, you'll only have freezing. So above the temperature, the forward change is spontaneous, but below that temperature, the reverse change is spontaneous. At zero, both changes occur at the same rate, which is why it's called equilibrium. More about equilibrium in another topic. That is all you need to know for this. Now, there is some additional stuff. There's some mathy stuff, but we'll get into the mathy stuff next time. So until then, be well, take care, and...